Well, hello everybody. Welcome to PBM Money. Well, today I want to bring you up to speed on my second meeting with my student, Billy. So, as I told you, we met at a neutral spot. We went to breakfast. And uh, I started out because I made a list of some talking points I wanted to mention. Uh, and I just covered them briefly. I probably spent five minutes talking about them. The first one I wanted to talk about was setting goals. Um, the next one I wanted to talk about was he was all over the place. And I'll come back to that in a minute. And then I went to, you know, let's, let's pick a plan, but let's stick to the plan. Let's stop changing it every time circumstances change around us. And then we talked about keeping the main thing the main thing. Now when I say he was all over the place, I mean I work with this young man and every day his parents are getting ready to move to Florida. And they want to try to leave him the house. So every day it was a new arrangement. You know, get a loan, we'll sign a quick claim deed, we'll do contract for deed, but we'll bring your brother in on it. I mean, it was all over the place. So I wanted to tell him, you know, we don't let circumstances dictate our finances. We set our finances, we stick to the plan, period. So we had that discussion. And he probably didn't find it very comfortable, but whatever. So then we talked about a budget. Now, in the last month, I again, he was all over the place. Uh, I had him give me two different budgets of what he lives on. And in case you don't remember, this young man's 22 years old, so it's not like he's gotten a lot of expenses. Um, and I could tell from the budget what he was doing um, since he's never saved money before the numbers I was giving him seemed really high and he was trying to pad his ex expenses so that he didn't feel like he had nothing so from those two budgets and experience I went through and made my own budget based on uh, his life, his experience, and those types of things. Now, when I set a budget, I usually set three goals. A not very aggressive one, a medium aggressive, and a very aggressive goal for savings and income reduction. Uh, He's the perfect category for very aggressive, but he's also um, a little apprehensive about committing to that much that soon. So what I told him is, I said, let's start out a little bit above aggressive and, uh, and let's see what happens. We'll do it for a month or two. If you're not comfortable, we can always change. And in the meantime, we'll take a look at your budget and see what we can do with your budget. Then, at, after that point, um, we went over the things that he had he was supposed to do last month, what he did, and how it turned out. Now, the first and most important thing is he made sure the money got to the right accounts, the right amounts, uh, both paydays. That's kind of impressive. Now he had, um, like I said, two paydays. He had $300 to an emergency fund and uh, $450 uh, to his investment account. So he made, I mean, he'd saved $750 in a month. To me, that was pretty good. Now part of that was bonus money. I get it. But even without the bonus money, he was still saving around $500 a month. He didn't realize that. Now the budget that I set him, I think we did 
550 for the next month. Uh, but anyway, he's got $750 uh, saved where he had nothing before. Another thing that I had wanted him to do was uh, with his credit card balance, he had a $1,900 credit card balance. We had two alternatives here. One was to get a personal loan and pay it off and then pay the personal loan uh, to the credit union and pay that off. That was my preference because it gets his balance to zero on his credit card immediately. That immediately starts benefiting him. Uh, and the other alternative was to just throw some cash at it each month until we pay the darn thing off. I didn't want to do that because I felt like that was taking cash away from uh, his investment account. He did get the loan at the credit union uh, and he wrapped that loan into uh, a loan to pay for a truck for his brother. So he got about a $4,000 loan and 2000 of that was towards his credit card. So his credit card balance is at zero. He owes some money on the truck. Uh, so he's got a monthly payment. Uh, that's going to be taken out and we've taken that into consideration um, now that action those two actions for this month accomplished a couple of things number one it showed him that he was capable of saving large amounts of cash in a month okay secondly we helped his credit score in several ways Number one, we took his utilization down to zero because it was at 99%. He had a $2,000 balance on that card. He had charged $1,900 and some change. So he took his utilization down to zero. Uh, we, used, we increased his loan mix. All he had before was a couple of car loans. Now he's got a car loan and a personal loan that will help on his credit score so we paid off the balance to zero utilization uh, increase his loan type and I have also uh, added him as an authorized user on one of my credit cards now, as a general rule, I would not do this. However, I know where he works. <laughs> so if anything happens, uh, I'm not the least bit concerned about him charging or doing anything untoward with my credit. So, with the actions that he took this month, plus the authorization on my card, his credit score ought to jump up here pretty quick. Now the goal for the credit score is 700. And I'd like to see that happen in the first six months. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, this is February, March, April, May, June, July, August. So by my birthday, I'd like to see that uh, credit score at 700. We'll see. I don't know. And then I, I ended by talking about the things I wanted him to do this, this coming month. I had mentioned this before, and none of it had been done. And in order to make quick progress and to not take any backward step, this needed to be done right now. And that was to author, uh, automate his savings from his direct deposit to automate at least the minimum on his credit card if he charges anything to the credit card uh, so that he can't miss a payment um, to automate his car payment through the credit union and his personal loan through the credit union 
Um, so, and, and he did it. I mean, two days later, he had the whole thing done. So he's got his direct deposit to his checking account. He's got the car loan and the personal loan taken out automatically. And he's also got uh, the credit card set up on uh, automatic payment to the credit card company and um, his savings is going to be automatically deducted. So there's nothing he's going to have to do except uh, work and uh, make money and everything else is going to be automated. Now, so we covered what he did, what he's going to do for the month, and um, so that was the end of the meeting. Two days later, when we met at work, he was telling me about a friend of his uh, that could use some help, and I told, I told him to tell his friend that the next time we met, uh, she was welcome to attend, and if she wanted me to help her, I would. And for those of you that don't know, this is part of our ministry. This is not something I make money at. Uh, in fact, uh, the ministry loses money uh, because it pays for the breakfast. Because it's ministry work, and it should well pay for it. So anyway, that's what happened in our meeting with Billy. This is our second meeting. Now what he doesn't understand yet is I told him I was going to keep that card in the drawer that he's the authorized user on. That's not what I'm going to do with it. Um, the card that he's an authorized user on is my Discover card. And starting in April, um, yeah, April, uh, there will be three months of 5% back on gasoline. And he lives out of town, so he's going to spend a lot on gas. I'm going to give him that card and have him use it only for gasoline. Then at the end of the month, he can write me a check, and I will pay the Discover card off. Because the automatic payments is taken care of past. And now we've got to teach him good habits right here, right now, for the future. So if, if it's me that he owes the money to and he's got to look at me every day, he will make sure that I get taken care of. And that's how he needs to see the credit card companies, the banks, everything else. So I am going to let him use a credit card, and I will be making 5% on his gas, whatever he spends. So if he spends 100 bucks in a month, I'll make 5 bucks. Big whoop. But we're going to do that for three months, and then we'll see what happens the next three months. So he's got a surprise coming. Uh, he's going to get some freedom. Um, and he's going to learn a little uh, a bit of responsibility about how to take care of a credit card through actually using it. Uh, and since it's my, my card, I will make sure I get paid on time. That will happen. So we're making progress. Uh, we're still laying groundwork, uh, and we, I think what we decided is it, we're not going to follow the regular plan uh, that I'd like to follow because he wants to buy his parents' house. So instead of get, going towards an investment right now, which is what I would like to do, uh, he just wants to accumulate cash for the next six months. And if his parents do move to Florida, he wants to be in a position to buy the house. By the way, he applied for the loan at the uh, credit union for the house. He was turned down. No surprise. Uh, and I did, I did advise him not to apply for anything else without going through me first. Because in the last month, he's got three hard pulls on his account already. One for the personal loan. One for... A transfer credit card that he got turned down for and uh, one for the house. The only one I knew about was a credit card because it was my idea. He didn't tell me about the other two until they were done. So, 
Some of the credit things that we did to help him is going to be offset for a couple of months, but hopefully with, within six months he'll bounce back and we'll have that credit rating up to 700. Well, that was our second meeting. The next one will be towards the end of March, uh, where hopefully we'll have time to go over his budget. We'll get to take a look at the accumulation of cash. Uh, we'll meet his friend, and I will update you on any progress that we make at our third meeting. That was, this is a summary of meeting number two with my new student, Billy. You guys have a great day, a great week, and happy investing.